I'm Andrew Dobson with AJ's Tactical Airsoft, and you're watching Show Us Your Humvee, Episode 17. In Show Us Your Humvee, we feed your Humvee fix with Humvees from around the world. The purpose of this series is to give you a deeper look into cool Humvees than you would get from a few pictures on social media. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly episodes. We will start in the pro sports utopia of Buffalo, New York, where Rusty has created a striking tribute to our troops. So this is some video of the restored M998A1 Humvee. Started out as a beige military troop carrier. Totally stripped it down, down to the chassis and uh, repainted the whole truck. Used the theme of the Memphis Bell, famous B-17 bomber. The bombs on the tailgate represent the 25 bombing missions that the Memphis Bell made without getting shot down. Most of the B-17s got shot down before they got that far. Pretty much kept the interior intact. Different seats, but the dashboard Threw in some uh, ammo boxes for storage. The camo box is uh, actually storage for the 12 volt converter because the Humvee is wired for 24 volts. Rusty still has a few add ons that he's working on, but she's pretty much good to go. Wheels, wheels and tires are obviously not military. And the license plate, my name is Rusty, the truck's not Rusty. Put in some LED headlights. The decal work was done by VSP Graphics in Elma, New York. He's got a custom built cargo rack and is modifying the troop carrier rails to incorporate them into the rack. Original mileage is only 13,000 miles. And if you notice, the speedometer only goes up to 60 miles an hour. Put some more ammo boxes in the bed of the truck for more storage. And I also coated the whole bed with um, rhino coating, colored, painted the same color as the truck itself. The paint is a custom mix. A little darker than olive drab. I started out with olive drab, but it was too bright for me, so I added some brown and some black, flat black, and came up with this color. It's kind of like the SWAT color. He's also making front and rear bumpers and reworking the brush guard. It's a never ending project, but it's on the road, and he's very proud to drive it every day. Took me two years to do it. Thanks for such an inspired tribute truck, Russell. That's all she wrote. Moving down the East Coast, let's check out Andy's M998 GMV build. I was recently passing Jacksonville, Florida on my way back to North Carolina and stopped at AJ's Tactical Airsoft to show you Andy's Humvee. Your destination is on the right. Thank you, little voice. From your first look, you can tell that this is not your average M998. Let's start with a quick loop around the truck and then we'll drill into the details. Up front we see LED headlights, a bridge plate, hood mounted Pioneer toolkit, and can even catch a glimpse of the air conditioner condenser fans through the hood grille. 
below, Andy has already added frame extensions in anticipation of a winch installation. The suspension is stock, but the blackout light has been replaced by an infrared light. Trailworthy Fab Ranger tires ride on paired bolt 24 bolt wheels. Here is some personal information about Andy. Behind the running boards are a set of rock sliders. As we move up the truck, we see the elusive Black Dog Customs 1165 style rear wall. Also from Michael Vaden's Black Dog crew is the cupola atop the roof-mounted turret. The grab rails are from Jacob Garlitz. Those are standard surplus X doors. Around the back, Andy has a pair of whip antennas, which we all know I'm a big fan of. An airlift bumper has been installed and outfitted with mud flaps and some useful accessories. On the left side of the airlift bumper is a step from Damage Control Customs. On the right, a Rhino tire carrier. And you are one of the rare people that has antennas actually hooked up. <laughs> you know, I, I see all the time, like mine, I, I had a whip on mine that I just sold and uh, is purely decorative. It's not the attached on, to anything. The one on that side is for that RT524. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish the battery's up because it's very cool. This is uh, the one, it's got the selector for different frequencies. Oh, right. yeah. And when you change it on the radio, there's a, there's a solenoid inside. You can hear it click huh. and change back here. Neat. Uh, the, I actually have two of these bases. The first one didn't work, so I had to get the second one. And then um, the antenna on this side is the correct antenna. This Harris mm -hmm. on this passenger side, I've got the PRC 152 vehicle amp, which takes the uh, the PRC 152. Ah. It's yeah. a, a grab and go. See, it just yep. it goes down yeah. in. Oh, that's really cool. And locks. And then this is the amp. Yeah. And uh, it's actually it's right. like I said, it's hooked Focus. up. This there we go. Sadly, this is not a real steel yeah. PRC one fifty two. It's a TCA. Yeah, I, I don't know any of the radio stuff, so yeah. But I know a lot of people do. They like yeah, it. we use this. We use this radio since it's it's not a, a military. It's on civilian frequencies, so ah. we can use it for playing airsoft. <laughs> and yeah, then, I was going to ask if you're able to use the other. Yeah, the other one, like I said, it works. But the problem is, it's really only on military frequencies. Yeah. So I don't I don't often turn it on because it's my keyed up the mic, and I don't really want to get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So. So are these SA-10s? Is that what these are? Yes. Yeah. I've got five swing arms. Three of them are still at the house. Here's the, here's the uh, Commander A-pillar mount yep. for the swing arm. I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm going to stick with this one or not, because I actually also have the one that mounts outside. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you have to pop the window for that? No, it, it, it'll swing around this way. Huh. You could pop the window out but I don't I don't think I'll do that <laughs> and and did you get those from Jacob no I actually the I got the outside a pillar mount the B pillar mounts and I actually have the C pillar mounts for the GMV uh-huh those five mouth and five swing arms a couple years ago showed up on eBay out of the blue one day for actually relatively cheap yeah um, I think I paid about 20 Books for everything. That's a steal. And uh, so I bought them, you know. <laughs> Did you want to shoot it? 
And then my latest acquisition, of course, is the Dagar uh, GPS. Are those hard to find? Very hard. Huh. I mean, those, these are the ones that uh, Dave tomorrow was talking about doing a 3D print of. Uh-huh. Yeah, I saw he was doing that. I don't know who. I know I have one, and John has one of these. Yeah, and probably Lars has got one. Yeah. <laughs> Just knowing Lars. Lars probably has two, actually. But, it. Oh, look at that. And it fires up. Yep. And I've got, I haven't put it in, I've got a plate right here uh -huh. for the, uh, there's a little outside GPS antenna. Mm -hmm. And then it's got, I've got the cables to hook up to hook it up to the batteries. Neat. There we go. The data plate proves it. It's an M998. Just one last look at that radio mm -hmm. setup. And then, you know, this is a working truck. Andy uses it for airsoft competitions all around the southeast and that's a lot of the reason why he has a full turret installed with that black dog customs cupola i like the uh the is that the what is it bmi or something the little uh panel that's up there yeah, yeah they make yeah we just needed some way to stuff. hold the air tank for the yeah roof mounted minigun. I still need to do a chicken shield. If you're ever there in Jacksonville, you should stop by AJ's Tactical Airsoft and take a look around. Yeah, I don't know a lot about Airsoft, but I know that what I'm seeing looks like a pretty wide variety. Um, Andy gave me a bit of a tour and explained that there are some really budget-oriented airsoft guns as well as some really high-end collectible hard-to-find like this Barrett 50 cal that I believe he said shoots an 8mm BB. Andy, thanks so much for letting me stop by and interrupt your day to capture some video and pictures to share with everyone here at Gear Report on Show Us Your Humvee. Our last stop for this week is down the coast in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Rolling up to this Humvee, I gotta tell you, it's attention grabbing. The yellow accents really pop and it sits up high. That's an intimidating truck right from the get go. So why don't we walk around and I'll point out some of the things that jumped out at me. First you see a custom front bumper with LED lights in various places, a worn winch couple different tow hooks there. We have body spacers. Those appear to be truck light headlights. James has upgraded to LED lights all around. We see he's not sitting on military wheels. Those are an upgraded wheel sitting on Toyo open country tires. Well, look at that. This is, in fact, a Predator build. And they even went with a bullet-shaped antenna. On the front, you see a airflow scoop. The head of that sledgehammer belonged to James's grandfather, and he put a new handle on it so he could use it here on the Humvee. There are LED light bars and alley lights up top. Did you notice the entire truck is coated in a textured green? I'm going to call it Rhino Liner. Uh, someone, I believe, told me that Predator has their own formulation that they use. I don't know. If you know, leave a comment. Predator sure likes to put their name in various places on the truck. I like the locking diesel cap. Here you can see they put Corbo seats all around and have kicker speakers up underneath the back seats. That appears to be a military soft top We'll come back and look at that bracket behind the seat that allowed him to cut the lower support beam out. Oh, there's another speaker. 
He appears to be uh, bedlined all the way around. We're going to come back for a closer look at that center console. And in back, you've got a, a closing cage there to, to secure things. A little fire axe in the back. Another look at that center console. Cup holders. All right, let's get in for an even closer look on that center console. So on the right, it's a, a unit in Bearcat, and then on the left is an Infinity. That would be the stereo. The cup holders are suction cup to the windshield. There's another look at that locking box in the back with the fire extinguisher on the front and your fire axe in the back. That is a little battery-powered light hanging from the ceiling. We see a phone holder suction cup to the driver's windshield. We go around back. You see LED tail lights and backup lights. Here we have, I initially thought this was an airlift bumper. I'm wondering if this is the civilian bumper version because look at the beefy extra connections you have in there going to the uh, both the aft section of the frame and up to that uh, center frame area that holds the differential. Not only do they have the regular body lift, but a couple other spacers in there as well. That's a lot of body lift. And here's another look at the extra frame supports going back to that towing hitch. I, I'm guessing, if you know, is that the civilian version of the Hummer towing hitch? Nice little Rotopax gas cans and water cans. That is a pretty nice little spare tire carrier there. Not too bulky, holds the tire up and out of the way so there's still some bed space to use. Air armor, I had to open this and get a look at what's inside. That's an air compressor, folks. Here we have a larger axe. This one is locked in place. Let's walk around to the driver's side and see how things look over there. See jack rails. Speakers under the front seat bases. I don't recall seeing a front seat base like that one before. Here we go, the data plates prove it is a 1987M998. Oh, look at that, the hood magically has opened. So, the suspension looks pretty standard. And what do we have here? That would be a Duramax conversion. I'm not going to try to describe anything about the Duramax conversion to you, because I know nothing. If you know anything about Duramax conversion, so you have any comments or thoughts or feedback on what you see here, please leave a comment. Help educate me. Looking up top, there's the alley lights and the LED light bar. That's a big light bar on the mount in front of the windshield. And you can see that they are running a standard military top on this. Seemed to be a big hit last week when I did the vaguely circular hand motion, so here you go. Let me hop down and walk around to the other side. See what we see from over there. Look at that. Lights on the inside. So when you have a hood open at night, you can see what you're doing working on the engine. That's clever. The bottom side of that hood scoop. Everything looks pretty normal. Normal windshield washer reservoir and oh, new electronics. That's a different fuel filter. Lots of different wiring running around up here. That looks like a really large radiator. You'd never know what's hidden under that hood till it comes open. Back in the driver's seat, take a look. Oh, that's a three-speed, and it's got the old-style parking brake. The center console facing the driver has got the obligatory zombie apocalypse light panel, and then some plugs for the Garmin GPS. I even saw a 120-volt 
outlet on the dash there, some aftermarket gauges, the phone holder, cup holders up top. That would be a aftermarket Momo steering wheel. You see the OBD2 diagnostic adapter as well as a keyed ignition with a clever little key adaptation. In the back, Larry just had to show me what may be the most interesting gas can I've ever seen because when you open the lid and swing the front open, it actually hides a toolbox. I thought that was pretty darn clever. I'd never seen one of those before. And with that, we bring episode 17 of Show Us Your Humvee to a close. Thank you for checking out this M998 from James. And thanks, Larry, for making yourself available on very short notice to give us a tour of this very custom Humvee. And also thanks to Andy and Rusty for sharing their Humvees as well. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments. A big thanks to our patrons for helping us bring you more unbiased, hands-on reviews. If you want your Humvee to be featured in Show Us Your Humvee, then send me an email with landscape-oriented pictures or a link to download video of you doing cool stuff in your Humvee, and I'll put it here on Show Us Your Humvee. If you've already sent in pictures or video for Show Us Your Humvee and you still haven't been featured, don't worry. You will be featured soon in the upcoming weeks. I'm just going through the videos in the order that they came in. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the range. Thank you.